Welcome back folks. Today we're going to have a look at this little power supply here. It's part of our beginner's toolkit and we're going to put it through its paces. We're going to load it and we're going to see how it responds to the loads. We're going to try out all its specifications. And we're also going to have a look at a few other issues that are kind of inherent to power supplies like this. And then we're going to take it apart and have a look inside to see what we can do about fixing some of those issues and making it a more useful little power supply. Um, but we'll, we'll make those modifications at some future date. We're just going to have a look inside it and, uh, and see what can be done, if there's enough room and if, uh, what, if and what changes we can make. All right, so uh, let's get started with this and I'll start off by showing you one of the issues inherent with these kinds of power supplies. Uh, because of the isolation transformer has got straight capacitances and also you have the EM, EMI suppression capacitors, you get these uh, stray voltages. So here we're looking at a, a 26 volts AC between the positive output and earth ground. And we also have uh, 26 volts, 25 volts, approximately 26 volts between the negative output and the earth ground. Uh, for most uses, or for a lot of uses, I should say, this is not a problem. Like if your circuit is floating, and it's not uh, attached to ground anywhere else in the circuit, then this is fine. Um, it, it doesn't really matter. But when you're attaching the power supply to a circuit that may have a, a ground reference somewhere, this 26 volts may cause damage, especially to field effect transistors or something of that nature. Now, mind you, if we go here and to look at the, um, uh, the amount of current that is being provided by this it is exceedingly small a few microamps that's about it uh, so it's not a lot of current but like i said there are some devices that can be hurt by this um, so that's one of the things we're going to try and look at when we open it up to see if we can actually supply this thing with a, a proper ground and uh, you know put a switch in it so that we can switch a ground let's say ground the negative terminal and uh, provide a proper earth ground. And that will also help eliminate some noise pickup and, and transmission by the device. So, and we're gonna have a look at uh, the noise that it can produce um, when we load it down and um, attach it to the oscilloscope. So we're going to be using um, this oscilloscope here and that DC load over there uh, to put this thing through its paces. So we'll set up for all of that and we'll have a look and see how it performs when it's, uh, when it's asked to do some heavy work. All right, here we have the, the power supply hooked up to the DC load and uh, the oscilloscope. And we can see here right now we're at minimum voltage and we basically got no current coming out of the thing, less than a milliamp. And we've got this um, waveform. This is typical of switching power supplies when they're under no load at all especially the cheaper ones you can get more expensive switching power supplies that, that deal with this a little bit better but right now uh it looks like um we've got let's add on here peak to peak volt peak to peak so we're running at about 500 millivolts of noise and that's not great because we, you know, that's a half a volt and we're only putting out 1.5 volts. So it's, uh, that's a major problem. Now, as I say, this is usually due to there being no load at all on it. And, you know, generally speaking, like if, if you, if you increase the voltage a little bit, that will generally go away, but you see it's being replaced by other noise of, of equal magnitude. Um, and also it'll go away, let's go back down here, it'll go away if we increase the load on it a little bit. And I think maybe 30, 40 milliamps should be enough. There we are. So that's that low frequency switching noise has gone away, but it's been replaced by uh, a similar noise to what we saw before when we put up the, um, put up the voltage a bit. So this already is, is this is pretty bad noise. So let's, let's increase the voltage up to the, the maximum, see what the level of the noise is with no load. And it doesn't really increase a lot, 460, 470. Let's go back down again, see what it was. It was a little bit less down here at 1.5 volts. So about 315 millivolts. That's still a significant 
part of the actual voltage being put out by the device. So it's um, it's not good. It's really not good. It's not boding well for this. So let, let's increase the load on it. Let's um, let's take out a few milliamps there. Let's go over to, we'll increase it by 100 milliamps at a time and see where we go. So let's see, 100 milliamps. So at 100 milliamps, we've got uh, 367 millivolts. Let's, see, let's go up to half an amp, what that gets us. So here we are around 420 millivolts. So my, we're, at, we're only at one and a half volts output. So we're almost a third of the, the output voltage is, is just noise. Um, let's take that up to an amp. Let's take it up to one and a half amps. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, that is uh... a... <laughs> so the machine is outputting 1.5 volts DC and we've got uh, 3.26 volts peak to peak noise. So, uh, yeah. Let's see if anything, if, if it helps us bring down, down the current a little bit, bring it down to half an amp. Let's raise the uh, voltage up. Let's get it five volts for logic level. I will note though that uh, the information on the screen uh, on, on the display of the power supply is pretty accurate. So uh, it's saying we're putting out five volts and the load is saying it's 4.99. So that's basically right on. And, and uh, power supply is saying 0.49 amps and the load is saying 0.499. So at least it's got that going for it. Now we're back down to um, a reasonable amount of uh, noise. So we're right about 500 millivolts. Uh, okay, that's that's one tenth of the uh, DC supply. So it's still it's still not great. It's it's really it's it's not acceptable for for this sort of thing. So let's, let's take it up again to that one and a half amps where we saw it all blow up before and see what happens. So it, it begins to blow up at 1.1 amps. At one and a half amps, yeah, we're back up to over three volts of noise. Now, RMS-wise, that is not going to be a lot. Um, so let's see what we get here, RMS. But it's still significant. I mean, we're looking at 130 millivolts of noise with only uh, 1.5 amps, and that's RMS. But even still, like for anything like digital, even fine audio and, and, and radio frequency work, this is just totally unacceptable. Like this power supply is is practically useless. Let's just, uh, let's try maximum current and maximum voltage, see what we get up there. So we'll bring it right up to the maximum voltage. So 1.49 volts and let's take it up to the rated two amps. There we are. Oh, wow. Let's put a whole new scale for that. So, yeah, so we've, <laughs> I'm going to have to give this a, a, a a complete fail. Um, this power supply is, it'd be fine for, you know, for motors, LEDs, uh, resistive elements like heaters, um, that sort of thing. This, it doesn't matter, relays, solenoids, whatever. A power supply like this would be just fine. That kind of uh, noise coming out of it is it's not gonna make any difference to those devices, but to digital electronics, to fine audio and to radio equipment, this just spells disaster. Uh, it's, it renders the power supply practically useless for those applications. And that's why in, my, in the last video we did on the oscilloscope, um, I didn't use this power supply because when I had set up to do that video, I noticed that both the function generator and the oscilloscope were doing odd things. And now we can see why. Like this power supply is just absolutely unsuited for work with digital electronics. Anyway, let's have a look inside it and uh, just browse through it. I'm not even going to bother trying to fix this thing. It's it's uh, it, it's this is just outrageous. So just have a look inside, see uh, what kind of um, 
construction produces something of this nature. All right, here's this uh, wretched little power supply. Uh, let's have a, a, a look inside it. Yeah, it looks like uh, I'm gonna have to pry these little bungee feet off it. Get it the screws. They probably won't go on very well again. If I glue them back on, and, well, it doesn't really matter. All right. Yeah, this looks a little bit strange. Got it kind of. S there we go. We're in. Well, there we have a digital control panel up here for the display. The tensiometer does the controlling the voltage back to this main board here. It looks like there's a solder in fuse. Kind of a hassle if you have to um, replace that. Got a mob here. Initial isolation transformer. Another one over here. We've got another transformer over here. We've got we've got cutouts here between the high voltage side and low voltage side. We've got them over here as well. So another cutout in the circuit board there. You know, from from this perspective, the the board looks like it's decently designed. There are enough components on here that this uh, that this could be a a relatively decent. Uh, Power supply. They even got a, a, a big capacitor across the output there to try and reduce the noise. So I guess this must have been something that they found out in, in product testing. But it, it's not it's not doing enough. It's not nearly doing enough. Um, as I said, from, from what we saw in the scope, uh, th th this thing is virtually useless. Fine for driving a motor or a relay or something like that, but for any electronics work, it's, it's, uh, it's hopeless. And as you know, it's, it's really not worth trying to improve it. I was thinking that maybe what I could do is put a three wire um, mains plug on it, uh, put a proper panel mounted fuse on it, and also bring in a ground so that we could uh, have at least the, the negative side of this power supply at earth ground to try and uh, reduce any of the uh, possible damage from the small amount of leaked voltage and current that I think caused by the switch mode power supply. But uh, given the results that we saw, um, I don't think it's worthwhile. Um, you know, construction is fairly normal for this kind of price range. It, it, uh, it's just unfortunate that it doesn't provide uh, a useful, useful power supply at all. That's really unfortunate. I was hoping, because it had quite a nice form factor, I was hoping that it would work out well. But no, we're gonna to have to look for a replacement for this, unfortunately. And uh, I think I have found one, um, but uh, when that comes in, we'll we'll put it through its paces and see what it's all about. But uh, that's it for this. This is a complete failure, unfortunately. So this here looks like a, a fairly decent supply. This is what we've ordered. Um, it with taxes in, it works out to be about ten dollars more than the other power supply, and it's got a nice form factor too. It looks more like a conventional power supply. So we'll see what it's like when it comes in. We'll see you then.